A while ago, we took a look at the Bolt 3 from Digital Storm, a boutique-built gaming PC that caught the eyes of a lot of enthusiasts for its striking good looks. But as attractive as it was, we know that many of you swear by building your own rigs exclusively, like I do. So today, we're taking a look at the slightly bigger brother to the case from the Bolt 3, the Leon Lee PC-06S, which supports up to micro ATX instead of just mini ITX. It's available on its own so you can fill it with whatever goodies you like without paying a premium to have it pre-built. So what's it like to assemble a PC inside of it? Let's dive right in. G Fuel is the sugar-free alternative energy beverage to maintain focus and endurance in long days and gaming sessions. Use our offer code and check out the new Kiwi Strawberry flavor at the link below. Leon Lee has been famous for making aluminum PC cases with interesting looks. Anyone remember the train case? Yeah, that's kind of what they're known for. The PC-06S is no exception. Not only do you get a completely aluminum body, but a side panel made of actual tempered glass. Beautiful. No plastic or acrylic, none of that stuff. This makes your components look downright dramatic, especially if you throw some nice lighting into your case. If you think its beauty is a thing to behold, you can display your work of art on the wall. The PCO6S is wall mountable, so that's pretty cool. But if you do just want it to be on your freaking desk, it can be oriented in either horizontal or vertical positions on your desk with the use of the stand, if you want it to be in the vertical position. Let's go ahead and start our tour of the case's exterior. On the front, you have the power switch, but interestingly, no reset button. Moving on, you have headphone and microphone jacks and four USB 3.0 ports, which is pretty sick. You will need a pair of USB 3.0 headers on your motherboard to get all of these ports running at full speed, but because many motherboards only have a single USB 3.0 header, they have included a USB 2.0 adapter. You just won't get full speed from that. You also get a slim optical drive if you're into that sort of thing, and a mesh grill that shows off your power supply of all things. More on that later. Moving to the top, there's more venting with a filter for the three pre-installed 120mm sleeve-bearing fans. You can also mount a radiator up here as well for additional cooling. Another note is that the entire top of the case is actually removable and unscrews and comes off, which you'll need to do when building the computer. The left side panel is just that large piece of tempered glass that shows off your internals. Since the case is quite thin, you won't be able to fit a tower-style cooler in here, but some lower-profile coolers will fit in just fine with the case's 85 millimeters of vertical tolerance. The right side panel is held on by four thumb screws and features a filtered fan mount that can hold either a 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter fan. Just mind your cable management if you use it as your fan blades might get very close to cables behind the motherboard tray. Our case doesn't seem to have come with the proper thumb screws for the glass side panel, although I'm not surprised as this review was massively delayed and we actually received this when it was still a pre-production sample, so I can't really blame them for that. The back has an interesting design where your motherboard and expansion port I.O. isn't exactly flush with the outer part of the case, but is rather recessed a couple of inches. There's also more venting in four PCI Express brackets. The bottom of the case, unlike more conventional designs that have venting of some sort for the power supply, is completely smooth. Now let's have a look at the inside of the case where things get very interesting. The PCO6S is a micro ATX case, but we used a mini ITX motherboard for our build since we unfortunately didn't have any micro ATX boards on hand, which is actually part of the reason why this video was so delayed. I wanted to hopefully get a micro ATX board, but we just still never got one. Anyways, getting all the parts screwed in wasn't too bad, but with beauty often comes tight tolerances. So as an additional note, screwing some things in was easier with a couple extra hands and doing this as a two person build might be genuinely helpful. I would also recommend to install the graphics card first before the motherboard. Now it's a little bit backwards, but the idea is once the motherboard is in, especially with its heatsink on, it can kind of get in the way of installing the graphics card, which is below it. So if you install the graphics card first, screw it in, get the PCI riser card out of the way, install the motherboard, and then plug in the riser card, everything just kind of works. 
Speaking of the graphics card, one of the most unique things about this case is that the graphics card is mounted vertically, so you can show it off in all of its freaking glory. It sits right near the bottom of the case and connects to your motherboard with a beautifully sleeved and pre-installed PCI Express riser cable that I previously mentioned. The effect this produces is super awesome, especially if you really want to make an aesthetic statement with your case. The power supply is suspended in the upper right portion of the case. Since you can't access your power supply at all from the outside of the case, what you have to do is instead run the power cable through a hole on the back and then through the back of the case and then up to the power supply. It's not a huge deal, but yeah, it goes in back here. This really allows you to show off your PSU, not something that's super common, especially with basement riddled cases these days, but it also makes things a little bit cleaner looking at the back. You also won't be able to access your power supplies on off switch as a note, however, so just be aware of that. There's also a removable cage for your hard drives and SSDs in the bottom right, as well as an extra bracket behind the motherboard tray that can mount up to three SSDs or two full size hard drives. Literally nothing in this case except for a few thumb screws is toolless. Everything is held in with a rather large number of screws. The owner's manual even indicates the case uses no less than 11 different types of screws, which aren't always easy to tell apart. I suggest using some magnetic parts trays of some sort or organizational system to keep things split up and sorted. On the flip side though, this results in a very sturdy final product when all is said and done, which I know definitely works for some people who tend to enjoy the experience of building a computer and the end result instead of just rushing through it, picking up their screwdriver a minimal amount of times. This fits in with uh, what is, as far as I can tell, Leon Lee's general philosophy of making things strong and stable, even if it results in a longer, more tedious process. The case's cable management situation somewhat reflects this idea as well. There are quite a few cable management holes cut out in rather sensible places, although I would have liked to have seen some like black rubber grommets in order to make things tidier, especially as some of the cutouts tend to be large and show off a bit of the wiring. But theoretically, with very clean wiring, this will actually look very nice. And instead of having rubber grommet little leaflets going all over the place, it's just a nice clean pass around, which is probably what I'm expecting they're going for. There also aren't any loops built into the chassis on the back, though Lee and Lee did include a few plastic adhesive 3M loops and zip ties, allowing you to use what you need and no more than that, making it take a little bit more time, but allowing it to be more or less perfect. So fitting in with that mantra. So, conclusion time. This isn't the easiest case to build in, but it isn't trying to be either. If you like the experience of building a computer, feeling at home surrounded by screws, aluminum, and tempered glass, and want a case to show off a relatively small system in, in a relatively legendary way, this may be the case for you, as long as your wallet is equally as legendary. Tempered glass and aluminum aren't cheap, and neither is this case at 360 US dollars, which from a Canadian perspective is closer to 490 dollars. Ouch. Squarespace, you should. You should use their 24-7 chat and email support if you have any trouble. You should try them out for $8 a month, and you should get a free domain if, you know, you buy it for a year, which for most websites actually does kind of make sense. Not all of them, but most. You should use their responsive design because that's just modern and awesome. It will look great on any device, phone, tablet, PC, I don't know, headset maybe? That's gonna be a thing at some point, I don't know. Commerce, if you need to sell something, you should use that because it just makes sense. There's like a storefront built in. Cover page, if you, if your mom's like, you should get a job, you can like use a cover page thing to try to apply for a job, which would be great. And you should start a trial with no credit card required today. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use offer code Linus to get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace, you should. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our Amazon affiliate code, buying a cool t-shirt that isn't from Transistor, which is a pretty cool game, but anyways. Going on the forum, becoming a contributor, or just becoming a member. We like having people on there, it's cool. Now that you're done doing all that kind of stuff, you might be wondering what to watch next, so click here.
This video is where I first saw the PC-08, which is maybe possibly going to become my case. I don't really know, but I used it in the compensator build, which there will be a V2 of, but Linus is making it kind of difficult to make a compensator build, which is supposed to be an overbuilt computer, when he just goes around building like eight and $9,000, or no, he built a $30,000 computer, then he got an $8,000 chassis. Like, dude, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to build like an overbuilt computer? That's like all the videos you make. I, ah.